Hello, I'm here with Paul Antigook. And Paul, I want to know, how is this research from 1980 in New Jersey relevant to us? It's an excellent question. Here we are in Alaska, opposite side of the United States. Why is this relevant? Gene Anion is trying to land a theory by putting feet on it and by actually looking in classrooms, five different schools in two different districts. And the theory that she's taking on goes all the way back to Martin Carnoy, who's doing studies of colonial governance in South America. And noting that one of the important levers that European powers use is that they develop and support an elite class that they can use as their go-between in order to acquire these natural resources in that case. So it, what he's done, and uh, Martin Carnoy is still a professor at Stanford, but what he's done is he's given us a different perspective on how education is used, its role. It's not only an opportunity ladder, but it's actually a, a tool for uh, better colonial administration, better access to resources. People who took him seriously and other writers uh, include uh, Henry Giraud, who looked at American education and said, if American education is about opportunity, how is it that there's so little relative social mobility? And how is it that people in poverty, that their children going through these public schools, these ladders of success and opportunity, how is it that they fail in this in such uh, a socially reproductive way? Is the language that, that uh, critical theorists use. Well, Bowles and Gintas are moving closer to reality because they're saying, well, we have all of this statistical evidence for what's going on that indicate that education is playing a specific role in this social reproduction. Michael Apple, he's looking at curriculum, but they're all like theologians rather than pastors, I suppose. They're up there having all of these ideas about what's going on in schools. Gene Anion says, let's just go into schools and let's take a look and see what we find. Her work, Social Class and School Knowledge, is so important. It's often used to this day. What I like about it is, <coughs> excuse me, is that it's the most skeptical about the role of schools, it causes us to step back. And as a person who's deeply committed to public education, to have a very tough set of questions about what we are doing in those circumstances, I think is very important, especially if you move beyond arguments and opinion and you actually look at evidence. That's what Jean Anion does. She looks at curriculum, she interviews teachers, she interviews students, she takes samples of uh, community response. She, she is going at this in multiple approaches. It's an amazing study just because it's tough for any human being to do what she's done. The reason why there aren't people who do that kind of work is that Jean Anion didn't know how tough a road she was designing for herself and how demanding it was. It turns out she is brilliant in organizing and sorting through things. Uh, but for many of us, if we're doing a dissertation, if we interviewed four people and transcribed it, that would be a lot of work. And, it, and she's doing kids teachers, administrators, she's sampling the curriculum. It's amazing that she did it. So one of the things that's come out of this is you may agree or disagree with Jean Anion's uh, interpretation of her data, 
but everyone acknowledges that she has done a heroic uh, set of accumulating good data about this view of schooling. So she organizes her work into four classes, working class schools, middle class schools, professional class schools, and executive elite class schools, all public education. In the working class school, her view with all of this data is that in that setting, it's more about conduct. It's more about compliance than it is about ideas. In fact, ideas, independent thought in this tightly structured worksheet driven direct instruction kind of a model to ask questions is to slow things down. So kids who are bringing natural curiosity to things or bringing their imagination to how to do something, develop a graph. One of her examples is a student comes up with a better way to do the graphing that's required for a math exercise. And the teacher says, no, don't do it that way. You don't know what I'm going to be asking next. It's, it's amazing when we look at it because we have this idea that public education is a leveling playing field. And what Gene Anion's study here is that no, it actually segments what kids learn in school and in the working class schools. If you're a bright kid, say you do twice as many worksheets, does it ever translate into what goes on in uh, the professional uh, kid school where they are learning to think and they're being rewarded? The expectation is for that. In this school, Learning to think independently uh, is likely going to be a source of punishment. So it, it's well worth reading. It's it's very well written. The only thing you have to do is she's a Marxist. So you have to get used to all that funny language. And one of the great things about reading this study is that you can then say, I've been forced into reading or I've been pulled into reading Marxist literature in America, and you can be patriotically upset by having to do that and talk about how universities are just indoctrination camps. And in fact, we know which university and what faculty member is doing that. So that's one, one way to look at it. But as she moves into the middle class classroom, school, it's more, there's more narrative to the stories that kids get. They get more context. They get some goal that's other than doing it exactly right. That the goal is to understand that there is this direction, this coherent, sensible world involved in schooling activities. Their relationship to knowledge these kids, I think it's, it's best exemplified though by one of the quotes, which is, where does knowledge come from? It's doing your work in school. It's still compliance, but it's compliance matched with inner, the interplay is compliance with learning how to think about what you're supposed to be doing to do it better. You're still doing other people's ideas. You're still doing the directions, but you're doing it in a way that is bringing some of your own imagination, some of your own thoughts to how to do that kind of work better. Moving on to the professional class school, where kids are coming from the professional class, this is the height of learning to think, to use your own imagination, to understand that Facts are just building blocks in order to understand something that you have to take those facts often and translate them into helping you solve a problem or to understand something more deeply. The child's learning, the student's learning, 
how to think is as important as anything. That's the underlying uh, direction that the professional class school is moving to. Exemplified by the teacher who says, I want them to think for themselves. And when the students are asked, where does knowledge come from? Probably for me, I thought one of the best summaries was to the student who said, it's figuring out stuff. Pretty interesting. It's by default, because you're concentrating on this learning to think for yourself, it's college preparation as, as a goal. Now there's this rare bird, public schools for executive elite children mostly are going to private schools. But in this setting, this school was set up to be like a boutique, a public school with all the flavor of being a private school. What they are doing is not only solving problems, but identifying problems, which is another step beyond. So they're uh, as a teacher uh, describes it, they manipulate variables and solve a problem. But they're manipulating these variables. It's very sophisticated thinking. And when they're asked, where does knowledge come from? One of the quotes is, information is, there's information knowing, and there's wise knowing. And they understand that there, it's more than the sum of its parts. So what does this mean for Alaska and Native education and education in Alaska? What it means is we have to think about what kind of education is going on in this classroom as a part of this school. Are these categories of curriculum still relevant to the schools in Alaska these many decades later? and in an entirely different geography. And the disturbing thing about it is most prospective teachers who spent time in the schools either as students and are as prospective teachers in their internship can readily identify the schools that they're a part of with one of these four classes uh, or types of school education that Gene Anion identifies. You can question her Marxism you can do a lot of things, but you can't question her her research, the quality of her research, and you certainly can't question her dedication to the children that are marginal in the public education system that we have. She was a powerful advocate. Privilege of meeting her several times at different conferences uh, was that she was such an advocate for trying to say that kind of independent thought that we think working class kids can't get to because they need discipline first. Her point is they never get past the discipline stage. So you might as well move to the ideas early because it gives all those children a better shot at having more influence over their own lives and direction.